Hello everybody, and welcome back to The Poor Man's Chemist. In this video, I am going to be making potassium disyanoargentate. Probably a little sodium disyanoargentate too, since that pesky sodium ion is still in the goddamn cyanide. Still ain't figured out a way to really deal with that effectively. Not yet. Trust me, I'm still working on it. Um, anyway, I thought I would begin the video with, um... The story of the hot plate here, for those of you that hadn't been following it on the YouTube community post and didn't catch it in the, live, in the text in the last video. Um, this thing died. I had been working with dissolving the silver in nitric acid, as you can see, since there were some aerosol little droplets of it that got all over it and turned colors in the sun. And it finally just went out to use it one day and it was not turning on. My roommate fiddled with it for a while. It's pretty fucked up. I mean, if the stirring will turn on sometimes, the heat will not. Um, I'm not going to use it during this prep because, you know, I mean, if, if I can get any, if I can get it to do anything at all, even stir shit, I'm just going to set it aside for later and hope to God that it decides to keep working then. We're, we're not going to push our luck with it and have it completely die and then me be without even fucking stirring. Because there's going to be some procedures where I just, you gotta be able to stir shit for longer. Anyway, um, but yeah, I think I figured out what's happening, though. I mean, you can see it from the silver. The silver, it actually revealed a lot. Because, I mean, most of the stuff that I work with isn't, you know, doesn't leave a visible stain to show me where it's been. And, um, you know, you can see from the condition of these bolts here, this, this shit is, these things are... I mean, this is not even a year old, and they're corroded as hell. I think the problem is coming about from evaporating stuff down with stirring and acids, making aerosols, and, you know, just kind of shit that's a little unavoidable. I'm kind of struggling to think of how I can really deal with this problem effectively. Um, you know, since only a fairly inexpensive hot plate is the only realistic thing I can really afford to replace this fucking thing with. I'm not really sure how I'm going to deal with that yet. Right now, I'm just trying to deal with just, just replacing it with fucking something that will work for the time being and um, coming back to this problem later down the road. I know, I know. The very same thing will happen and we'll be right back in this mess, but I mean... Hell, this thing was kicking the can down the road, so we'll just kick it again. Anywho, let's look at the cool, you know, enough sad stories. Let's look at happy things. So I'm going to bring you guys over here where we have the most light. This stuff seems to be, this is the silver nitrate that I made, that I got from that ounce of silver. You can see it is quite beautiful. I am, I'm very pleased with it. This is just three grams from the first crop of crystals. There is a second crop of crystals. The rest of it I just put in silver recycling, and I'll process it later here at some point and recover all the silver from it. Um, it's pretty easy. I think I did a video of that. I don't know if it's on YouTube or not. I honestly can't remember. It's definitely on BitChute. <laughs> If you guys want me to upload it to YouTube, let me know, and I'll put it put it up there on how to recycle silver. Um, it's very easy. But anyway, the plan here is to dissolve this shit in water and then react it with a stoichiometric amount of our cyanide solution that will precipitate out silver cyanide. We will decant off as much of the solution as possible, react that with the same amount of cyanide again, and that should give us our mostly potassium disyanoargentate. We will then evaporate it down and see if we can't get some beautiful crystals out of this. Um, potassium disyanoorate, the gold analog of this, gives nice beautiful crystals even if they are colorless. So maybe the silver one will too. It'll probably be sensitive to fucking light like every other goddamn silver compound. Man... I'll tell you what, after making this shit, I, I definitely, silver is the element that I, I love to hate at this point. Because if you get it on your skin, as I have come to find out, it doesn't matter if you wash it off within a couple of minutes. Oh no, as soon as you go in the sun, your skin's going to turn colors. Actually, it was pretty cool. <laughs> 
I got it on my fingertips. I had no idea I did. And then yesterday I was out driving and it's like within about half an hour, man, my fingertips turned all black and red and my thumbnail turned red and it looked really cool as shit. It looked like I had leprosy and my fingertips were rotting off. It was pretty neat. It was pretty sweet. I, I had fun with that. Um, Yes, I'm weird. We've already established this. Moving on. Um, so, yeah, uh, be careful if you're working with silver nitrate kids because um, when you least expect it, it will turn your skin colors. Even if you get it off relatively quick, it's still going to leave a spot. It comes off very easily. I mean, after a few days, it starts coming off, and it's not really a big deal. I wouldn't paint yourself with it. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, you don't want to end up with Argyria. Trust me, you don't want Argeria. That's a bad thing. Um, don't drink colloidal silver, kids. Um, so, yeah, you do want to be careful with it. Look, look, even poor man's chemist is wearing gloves for this one, okay, kids? So, you know, be smart. Anyway, we're going to dissolve this in water, precipitate out our cyanide, and then we're going to make our shit. So let's get going with that. Didn't realize it wasn't recording. Although, all I did was just put some water in here. You're just catching it like seconds afterwards. This shit dissolves incredibly easily in water. All right. Now, it's time for cyanide. And it's time for a volumetric pipette. All right. According to my calculation, we need about 3.6 mils of this stuff. However, we know from our work with the palladium... Okay, we need a bulb that actually is... Where the fuck is the bulb that works? God damn it. As I was saying, we know from the work I've done with palladium that my math is off somewhere. So I expect this to be not quite enough. But that's okay, actually. I mean, we're not after a set amount of this or anything. So long as we get some of it, I'll be content with that. All right. Are we focused here? I hate having to look in here. It's such a pain in the ass. The lighting always sucks. All right. Here we go, kids. Fun with cyanide. All right. Come here, you fucker. Don't you spill on me. Okay, now. Play nice cyanide solution. Don't nobody really want to deal with your bullshit. All right. Okay, now. Okay, we can't have an excess... Will you stop being difficult? Ooh, that smells a little funny. That hadn't been opened in several days. We're just going to put that over there, and I'm just going to stand out here in the fresh air. <laughs> oh, look, it's like cottage cheese. And it is stupidly sensitive to light. Holy shit. Wow, is it sensitive to light? Okay, well, okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. How is this? How are we doing here? All right. Um, hmm. Okay, let me bring you guys up here where you can see it. Sorry about that. It was um unexpected. It started going gray. It was yellowish, and then it went gray, and then I got out of the light as fast as possible. It is kind of clumpy. Kind of reminds me of cottage cheese in water. I'm not even kidding. I don't know. Now, now, it doesn't, now that there's more water, or maybe it's just that it's out of the light more, it seems to be a little more stable. Well, that was exciting. Um, did we get all of the silver out of it? I guess we'll find an easy way to know here. Actually, there's an even easier way without opening the death bottle. We can just flush the volumetric pipette with a little water. Do we get any precipitate? No, that is making holes in our precipitate. Okay, 
that's the precipitate um, complexing with the excess side. Well, wait, no, no. Is there some on the surface there? It's hard to say. I know, guys. I'm sorry. This is why I hate working with silver because I can never get it to show up, everything to show up well on so low light levels. It's very frustrating. I want to be able to bring this out into the light where I can show it to you in its full glory, but it does seem to be fairly photosensitive. Well, we're going to let it settle out. And, you know, let's add some more water to it here. Oh, look, you can see it that way. It's actually not far off. In real life, it is a little more yellow, I think, than it might be appearing there. But you're getting a good, good look at it, at least I hope. Maybe if we did it like this, would it look better? Maybe, possibly. Let's try that from that angle. There we go. See, it looks very granular. Neato. All right, well, um, yeah, we'll just let this settle out. We'll decant it. We'll dissolve it in the excess cyanide and call it a day. Okay, everybody, here is our silver cyanide. I've rinsed it in water a couple of times. I took the um, rinse water, which had small particles of silver cyanide suspended in it, and took it out and let it be exposed to ambient sunlight, and it seemed to be actually a little resistant to it. So I'm not sure what we were seeing there at first. Don't really know. Um, I'm still not taking any chances with this. I'm just going to keep it inside the foil like this, just, just to be safe. It seems to like it better when I keep it like this. Um, not going to be ideal without having magnetic stirring, so bear with me here, kids. I figure what I'll do is I'll use this. It's meant to retrieve stir bars, so it's covered in a kind of plastic that should be pretty unreactive, yet it should work to stir pretty well. I don't even have, like, the longest glass stir rod that I have because all of them have broken by this point. I think, like, the longest piece is, like, about the same, just slightly taller than this beaker is, so we're going to go with this instead. <laughs> all right, um, let's see... This is going to be so weird. Okay. We're just going to add in a little bit at a time, and we're going to see what happens here. Start by adding in less than what I know I need. Oh, look at that. They just carved a hole right in the middle of that shit. Well, maybe I can just do it like this. It'll be nice and simple. Don't you love it when shit works out? And oh look, there's no more fumes coming off the bottle of cyanide. That's always nice. Okay, turning a little white here, looks like. A little bit of a color change. Now the object is to add just enough cyanide to dissolve all the solid without adding any extra. Very much like the alkali tetracyanopalatic. everybody there we go potassium disyanoargentate with a little bit of sodium disyanoargentate too um now what i'm going to do is put this in an evaporating dish over a boiling water bath and i'm going to let it evaporate um 
Yeah, if I can't heat it with stirring, that's the only way I trust this stuff to evaporate down. This is going to be fun because it still has to be done in here where it's kept out of the light. I'm not sure how photosensitive this complex is, but I like it's a silver compound, so it probably is photosensitive like every other goddamn silver compound. I don't know. We'll see. I will get that set up and get it going, and I'll come back when there is something to report to you guys. Okay, everybody. So I've been evaporating this down for a while now. You can see our product there on the edges. I want to kind of, ouch, document it. Come on, swirl up here a little bit. It's like thick sludge down in there at the very bottom. It's not stirring up very well. But you can see it. there is something in there. Um, it is sensitive to light, at least according to all the literature. I can kind of see it. But I came up with a creative solution to deal with that, as well as to deal with the ventilation problem, which is just to put a fan here. And see, killing two birds with one stone. Who says redneck is not the mother of invention? In fact, I'm going to go ahead and turn that on here because this morning when I was evaporating this fucker down, I caught a nice whiff of something that I can only describe as being like fruity almonds. I don't know how else to describe it. It was only for a moment, but uh, yeah, that was concerning. This stuff is supposed to break down at high temperatures to hydrogen cyanide, I think silver oxide, and... I don't know, it's on the screen, you can see it there. At any rate, you know, that's a cause for concern, especially when one is working inside of a giant steel box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's a little worrisome. So, anyway, important safety tip, kids. I put out a call to the everybody on the channel asking, you know, if somebody can find the temperature at which this shit breaks down, because I cannot. Hopefully somebody will respond and let me know if this is a good idea to keep evaporating it down or not a good idea. And in the meantime, I'm going to keep evaporating it down and um, keeping an eye on it briefly. And I will come back when there's something else to report. Okay, people, this is it. This is our potassium dicyanoargentate with a little bit of sodium dicyanoargentate in it. It is, well, a pretty nondescript white solid. Um, it's supposed to be photosensitive, but it's tolerating this low level of light. This stuff is about fucking impossible to completely dry. Um... I am really not sure what was up with that. After I took it off the heat and let it cool off, it all completely solidified, so it may melt a little bit. Oh, and some um, literature I was just reading says that this stuff absorbs through the skin, too. So, um, yeah, don't touch it, kids. That, that's an important safety tip that I wish I had stumbled upon earlier. All I'm going to do now is put this in the desiccator and let it dry out. So let's see if we can get a better, better view of this stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't want to wrap up with this. This is lame. There we go. I have no idea what the spectrum of light coming off the camera is, the flash there is, but yeah, it's okay. It's very nice. It's very sparkly. I'm not sure if that's because it's slightly damp or if it's just because it's kind of crystalline. It's very nice. Look at it. It's very, very pretty. Well, that was easy, and oh, it's crystalline. Oh, yeah, it is. Ah, that's cool as fuck. Ah, shiny sparkle. Man, fucking silver. If this was thallium, I could take it out in the sun. Yeah, thallium wouldn't be such a pain in the ass, you fucker. Oh, well. Um... Yeah, if I could create thallium cyanide. Um, one of these days, kids. Trust me, I'm working on it. Anyway, there we go. Potassium dicyanoargentate with a little sodium dicyanoargentate in it. That is pretty goddamn cool. It sparkles. It's sparkly. I love the sparkle. 
Well, yeah, I'm just going to put it in the desiccator and let it dry. Of course, I will post pics of it to YouTube and subscribe stars, since they're the only two places I can fucking post pictures to. And um, there we go. Well, this is a fun compound to make. Kind of a pain in the ass, but now all I have to do is make some alkali metal cyanide complex of copper one, and I'll have the whole set. I'm just knocking out whole fucking groups on the periodic table here, man. We just making cyanides of every goddamn thing on this channel. I mean, well, it makes sense, right? Toxic metal, toxic anion. If that ain't poor man's chemist, I don't fucking know what is. <laughs> well, anyway, if you like this fun little video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, well, really must suck to be that dead inside. I'm sorry. Um, subscribe, comment, share the video. Maybe throw a few bucks to your favorite content creator here. He's like drowning in the cost of all this shit. And um, until the next one, you guys, I'll see you later. Look at it. It sparkles. It's pretty. It's so pretty. Ah, it's a contact poison too. I love this shit. <laughs>